two years ago in one of the driest summers on record, I made a video about Thrust Cross Reservoir and the lost village under the lake. Two years later, in one of the wettest summers, although thankfully not today, I've come back to see just how much has changed. Be sure to check out the first video by clicking the card or the link in the description. To give you a recap, this was once a bustling village with a thriving flax industry. Flax is a material used to make linen and so was quite important for the local textile industries. But as time went on, the industry declined, people moved away and by the 1910s this was a ghost village. In the 1960s Thrust Cross Reservoir was built and these ruined buildings were drowned beneath the waves. Today this reservoir provides water for the Leeds region. The reservoir has a capacity of around 1,725 million gallons. That's over a billion and a half, in other words. Last time I was here, it was so dry that I could walk along the cracked riverbed. We've tried our best to replicate the shots from the last video, but it's impossible because it's all covered in water. It's really quite shocking to see just how much of it has been reclaimed by the water compared to before. In 1995, during another drought, the village was again revealed, this time to a far more severe level. In my previous visit, the bridge and these buildings were still underwater. The flooding of villages to create reservoirs is still a contentious topic. In 1965, the still-inhabited Welsh village of Capelkelyn was submerged to build a reservoir for Liverpool. All the villagers, the people who had lived there for generations, were forced to leave their homes. It remains a highly emotive point in Anglo-Welsh relations. Thankfully, Thrustcross was largely abandoned decades before the reservoir was built. In this photo from the early 1900s, you can see that the houses are already derelict. I'm struck by the fragility of our natural resource infrastructure. In 2022, Yorkshire Water reported that reservoir levels had fallen to a critical low of 32%. If one bad summer could have this effect across Europe, with our recovery due in large part to fortunately heavy rainfall, what would two bad summers in a row do? Having seen the scale of drought in this area, I ask, are we doing enough to ensure that we have water security for future generations? When I came here last time, I struggled to articulate the creepy feeling that you get because there is a spooky vibe. You've got ghosties at your heels. <laughs> well, luckily when they built it, all of the, the cemetery was transferred to a separate one. So there aren't going to be any skeletons floating up into the water. But there's, there's a sense that, you know, nature has reclaimed itself, that everything we do is powerless against the force of time and nature. We tend to think of historical monuments as static. They've always been there and hopefully they always will. So to have something which appears or disappears depending on the weather is extremely unusual. In that heat wave of summer 2022, many European rivers dried up and people discovered previously unknown historical artifacts. Maybe we need to change our thinking about monuments and objects to include their mutability, their ability to change. There's a real sense of pathos generated by this place. It's the fact that there was once a village here and now it's ruins sitting underwater like a castle in a goldfish bowl. And really, my feelings on this can be best summarised by an abridged performance of a famous poem. I met a traveller from an antique land 
who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert, near them on the sand, a wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command. Tell that it sculpt a well those passions red, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing now remains. If you like this video, do subscribe and check out some of our previous ones. Please share it with people who would also find it interesting. These steps aren't very even, are they? <laughs>